Hi guys, welcome to another video from Overbyte Gaming, and today I want to talk about the second game in the series of the Legacy of Kane series, that's the Love series, and it is Blood Omen 2. Now, there's, it's not as well remembered as the original Blood Omen game, primarily because uh, we, when it could be argued that the original Blood Omen was uh, somewhat of a genre maker, threshold breaker, innovative piece of art, this one's kind of just puts it's kind of just an action game put in the, the universe of Legacy of Kane where you play Kane. So yeah, I mean it came out in two thousand two, so we'd had action games, three D action games had been around for quite a while by that point, so it wasn't really anything uh too groundbreaking, but I still enjoyed it. I certainly enjoy playing this game better than I did Ratziel, because I just never got on with Ratziel, to be fair. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this was released on PS2, Windows, and GameCube as well, although the GameCube release was almost a year later. And it's a bit of a corker, really. I, I do like it. There are some elements that are a bit, you know, 3D action games are a bit trickier to get right than sort of overhead Zelda type games. So there's some, there's some jank to it, I'm not going to lie. Um, like turning the camera with like the left stick rather than the right stick and just looking up and down with the right stick is a bit... It's, it's just odd. I mean, it's, it's a decision they wouldn't make nowadays, but it's this, I guess it was part of the cause back then. You still hoover in blood from across the way, so that's excellent. It's actually set in kind of an alternate universe. I think Soul Reaver 2 actually sort of branched it off. And in this game, spoilers for the end of the first one, uh, Kane has decided not to save Nosgoth and to instead rule it under his iron fist. Uh, that goes well for 200 years, and then he is defeated by the Seraphan Lord, who comes in with this glyph magic, who, which is deadly to vampires. And... Um, Thus he spends 200 years asleep, essentially. He's just like, damn it, I'm just going back to bed. As you would, if you're like a vampire that's being messed up with glyph magic. You'd probably be like, yeah, back to sleep for me. Okay. So he wakes up 200 years later uh, to find the Seraphan are basically ruling the world. Uh, they have erected weird glyph-powered slums and cities uh, that's a bit sort of steampunk ish and you are awaken and you meet a vampire called Uma, who then directs you that you're basically the vampire of resistance now. <laughs> uh, you've gone from ruling the place to being the resistance. I guess it's cyclical, that sort of thing, though, so whatever. And you need to uh, obviously take down the Seraphan, reclaim your throne, and basically put everybody back under your iron fist where they belong. Uh, as... The game, as I said, is a 3D action game now. Uh, it does retain some of the dark powers that you have previously ever missed form that you can take. And I, I don't I don't know whether to be like, hey, miss form, it's just kind of there. I mean, you can use it for stealth sections and creep up behind people and take them down in one, but I, I generally prefer just beating them up. It does, you do sort of get a better feeling of power in this game, I think, as being a vampire and what have you, because you can use your claws. Now, that's something that I rarely see in vampire games. They've always got a weapon, so they may as well just be tougher humans. But in this, no, you use your vampire claws. They're perfectly acceptable as a weapon, although you can pick, you can pick up weapons, although they break. Which is annoying, because there's chests to actually enchant them, so they last a bit longer and do more damage, but then they break, so you're kind of like, oh. Wow. That was a chest I could have used elsewhere. There are other chests, however, and these ones are full of experience. You have two bars on your screen. One is your blood, which is your health, and the other is basically your experience, or your vampiric lore, as it's referred to in-game. As you kill things and drink blood, I think it's the drinking blood rather than killing things that gives it to you, and opening chests, you get these red orbs come out, and that helps fill up your bar. And when you fill up the bar, your blood bar increases, and... Well, the other one increases as well. They both increase and you have to get more lore in order to reach the next sort of plinth of health. And you can't just stay still though. No, no, your health will drain because you are a vampire and you live on blood uh, from 
from a digestive standpoint, I suppose, as well as a health standpoint. So you do need to keep top it up. So you will basically kill everybody you see, uh, regardless of whether they attack you or not, just to get your lore up, more health, more blood, all those good shit. Uh, you will get, as I said, several abilities as you go through the game. I don't want to talk too much about the game because I kind of want you guys to play it if you can. Uh, you do get a jump where, which is not too badly used. It's one of those ones where you're like, I pick jump and then you put a reticle of where you want to jump to and he jumps there. So being a complete platform rubbish man like me, uh, yeah, it's helpful. It's super helpful in order to do that rather than just basically having to hold down a button and try and guide my jump because, I'm, yeah, bad. It's just bad. Uh, I am playing it and have captured it on the PC. It was not a smooth process, I must admit. I had to use a custom DX8 wrapper uh, for it. And I've also added some... I can't remember the name. Is it recollection? Recollection? I, so something like that. It was, it, it was basically a mod project, which has altered a few bits of the aesthetics, but it, it still looks pretty similar to the original. Uh, I did have it back in the day on PS2. Uh, I can confirm it is on Steam for £4.99 new pence, or your regional equivalent. Uh, obviously, second-hand market for PS2 um, and Xbox. I think it was Xbox, wasn't it? Yes, Xbox and GameCube. Your prices will vary, I suppose, given availability, region, and, well, demand. That's how business works and stuff. Super good game. I really enjoyed it. It's not... I think it's more the fact that it's a decent game, but I love the world it's in, and being Kane is always a blast. I think that that's more of why I hide it in, hold it in such high regard. Um, if I was compared to the first one and asked myself which do I like better, it's super tough, because it's like comparing Alien and Aliens. They're very different things. Uh, they both have aliens, or in this case, vampires in them, but uh, yeah, they're very different indeed. Uh, Blood Omen 2 is definitely the aliens in that analogy, by the way. <laughs> uh, but I, I kind of like this one better, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. I, it, there's less of a where the fuck do I go vibe about it. And just having Kane, I, I, there's something about the way he blocks. That I just love. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's just strange, but yeah, they have like a three sequence of attacking of a three sequence block if you're down the block button. It just, instead of just like sort of forming a protective shell, he does actually block the strike. So it looks better than what I think we had in most of the games of the time, rather than just to like going in a defensive stance and then just having it not do any damage. He actually blocks the blows as they come in with a weapon or with his forearms because they've got armor on. So I actually really like it. I know it didn't do I don't think it did too well when it came out, did it? Uh, let me check, let me check, let me check. Yeah, so Metacritic, when it came out, the PC was 66, uh, PS2 was 67, GameCube was 71, and Xbox was 76. So not a huge um score aggregatedly i mean the pc one was uh, it's a port it's definitely a port it's not built from the ground up or anything like that and getting it right now nowadays is a little bit trying but it is possible as evidenced by me being wonderful and managing it still not still not running as it should though the, the actual menu uh is well the main menu i should say is slower than dog ship I mean, you'll go to like settings, you'll click settings, it'll do the audio cue for you clicking settings, and then nothing happened. And you sat there thinking, is it crashed? And you notice the, the screen's getting slightly darker. And slightly darker. And then it goes away, and then it got, it starts going back, and it's it's the, the settings menu. And you're just like, oh, we're just running super slow. Interesting. I think it's something to do with the affinities of the core. I think it only uses like one core, and if you try and give it more than one core to work with, it gets a bit confused. I'm running a 10 700k, so to meet I have what? Who's there? Eight cores. So yeah, it, it, it's a bit confused human. at that point. Curious <laughs> that you would 
I won't give anything away, but yeah, the, the Seraphed are not what they appear to be. But there, there is more to them, and there's obviously nefariousness to them. So even though you're you're supping down humans and killing everything you see, you're probably the better option, if I'm honest. And of course, what would a game be without mini-bosses? And the mini-bosses in this are quite interesting, because they're sort of traitor vampires. And they have different skills, and once you kill the vampire, you get their skill. A bit, bit, little bit speedy. There's one Wait, for that. <laughs> He's a bastard. Back. She promised me the dark and there's a few sort of she asked. characters we'll her, which you? were established in the original I'm game as being dead, which is why this is like a spin-off. Um, I think Voriador is, was died died in the first game or at the start. Uh, he's in it as is Janos Aldrin. There's a name for the bast. Probably didn't pronounce it correctly, but whatever. We all like that. Anyway, guys, that's been my opinion on Blood Omen 2. I'm not going to rate it because it's a classic. What would I rate it against? We've had a few. We've actually had a few vampire games of late, haven't we? Um, we were, I mean, you've had Vampire. I've had a lot of the uh, Vampire the Masquerade. There's a lot of like uh, interactive novel type ones out there, Greetings, like Cotteries of New York and. Night roads and stuff like that. I think I've got most of those actually. And they're pretty good, but you know, they are what they are. Obviously, Vampire the Masquerade at Bloodlines is numero uno without a shadow of a doubt. Ah, just be nice to get uh, the second one at some point, but. I don't know. It looked kind of janky, and obviously the internal strife of that. I, I think it, I'd be surprised if it wasn't fully cancelled. I know they're not taking orders for it anymore. And it was like seventy quid, man. Seventy quid for a PC game. I'm gonna give Sony their piece of their pie for Christ's sakes. Anyway, I got off a bit of a tangent there. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down below. Let me know down below as well what your favourite vampire game and if you played this as a younger child of the night. Is that how they say it? I don't know. Fuck it. It's late and I've just got back from work, so screw it. Anyway, guys, take it easy and I'll catch you next time.